Okay, so after going over 12-1 general sequence, 12-2 arithmetic sequences, today I'm going to go over 12-3 geometric sequences. What exactly is a geometric sequence? A sequence is geometric. You know, when we talk about arithmetic it was if the difference between two consecutive terms is constant geometric is if the ratio instead of difference if the ratio of any of its to any and all okay if the ratio of all of its two consecutive terms is constant so basically a2 over a1 is r, a3, and we're using r for the ratio, just use d for the difference, r, a4 over a3 is r, and so on, where r is the common ratio. So for example, 2 over 8, 16, and so on, you can see here the common ratio is 2 negative 1, 3, negative 9, 27, and so on. The common ratio is 3 over negative 1 is negative 3, negative 9 over 3 is negative 3, 27 over negative 9 is negative 3. So we have, for arithmetic, we have the nth an for arithmetic, the nth term, is a n equals a 1 plus n minus 1 common difference for geometric the nth term is a n equals a 1 times instead of plus it's times instead of d times r times n minus 1 it's r to the n minus 1 and you can see why because if you have first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, and then the nth term, a1 is a1, a2 is a1 times the common ratio, right? Because when you divide a2 over a1 is r, so a2 is a1 times r, a3 is a1 times r squared. So to move forward, you times by r each step, a4 is a1 r cubed, a5 is a1 r to the 4, so a n is a1, you can see this is always 1 less than that, so this is n, this is r to the minus 1, that's where this came from. Number 12, page 864, 12, page 864, it says find the nth term of the geometric sequence with the common uh, ratio and the first term so a n equals a 1 r n minus 1 a 1 is root 3 r is root 3 so this is root 3 to the n right because this is to the first you add the powers you get that and uh, they want the fourth term so a 4 is root 3 to the 4 which is 9 20, page 865, the sequence is e squared, e4, e6, e8, let's see what the question is, it says the first four terms of a sequence are determined whether these terms can be the terms of two. Okay, so let's see, e4 over e2 is e2, e6 over e4 is e2, e8 over e6 is e2, so it is geometric with a common ratio of e2 okay determine whether the, the terms can be terms of geometric is the sequence you find the common ratio we did find the common ratio that's all 34 so we're given a sequence the first terms let's see what they want us to do it's determine the common ratio fifth term and the nth term of the geometric sequence so the common ratio we, wrote, we already know it's geometric, so we don't have to check. We just do A2 over A1 to get the common ratio as a quarter. Now, to get the fifth term, 3, 4. All we have to do is take the negative 1 8 and times it by R. 
which is negative 1 over 32. So that's the fifth step. To get the nth term, we use the formula a1 times r to the n minus 1. The first term is negative 8. r is 1 over 4 to the n minus 1. This will give me any term I want right now. Okay. Here's an example. The second term of a geometric sequence is 10. And the first term is 50 over 27. Find the seventh term. So we need to find the common ratio before anything else. Okay, just like arithmetic, you need the common difference. Geometric, you always need the common ratio. So we're given the second term is 10, and the fifth term is 1250 over 27. So remember, this formula is not going to help because we don't have the first term. We have the second term. So we're going to use, again, common sense, just like we did with uh, arithmetic. So a5, if we have 2, how do we get to a5? We times, remember here, n minus 1. So it's going to be 5 minus 2, which is 3. So to get from the second to the fifth, 3, 4, fifth. How many r's do you times by? From the second to the third, that's 1 r, r squared, r cubed. Okay, so 5 minus 2. So now we can find r, 1250 over 27 is 10 r cubed divided by 10, which is times by 1 over 10. So that's going to be 125 over 27 is r cubed, the cube root of 125, and then the cube root of 27. So we got r now to find the seventh term. So a7, you can use the second term, and that's times r to the fifth power. So 7 minus 2 is 5, so a7 equals 10. And then 5 over 3 to the fifth, which is 31, 250 over 243 if you do the math. Okay, here's one of these. So we're given. That's given the third term of a geometric sequence is 27 and the fifth term is 243 and it's geometric. Find the eighth term. Again, we need r, so a5 is a cubed times r, 5 minus 3 is 2. So 243 is 27 r squared. What's 43 divided by 27? 243 divided by 27 is 9, so r is plus or minus 3. So let's see if r is 3 and if r is negative 3. We want the 8th term, so the a8 equals, if we use the 3rd, we're going to times by r to the 5th, 8 minus 3. So 27 times 3 to the 5th, which is 65, 61. If we use negative 3, a8 equals 27 negative 3 to the fifth, which equals negative 65, 61, which doesn't make any sense because you can see we're going into, into uh, I mean, it does make sense, but we're assuming R is positive in this case. So I, I don't want both of them. So just assume R is positive, okay? I'm just going to assume that. I just want one answer. And on the test, I will ask for one answer. I don't want to confuse anybody. Okay. So here's another example. We're given A2 is 10, A5 is 1250. Which term of the geometric sequence sequence is 31,250. So an is 31,250. 31,250. What is n? 
we want to know what has been. In fact, we need R before we do anything else. So we're going to do A5 equals A2 R cubed. 1250 equals N R cubed. 1250 divided by 10 is 125. So R is cube root of 125, which is 5. Okay. So A equals, we'll use A2 times R cubed, R to the N minus 2. A N is 1, 250. A2 is 10. R is 5. Divide 10, 31 5 equals 5 to the n minus 2. Do log. So log 31 25 was n minus 2 log of 5. Divide by log of 5. n minus 2 is log 31 25 over log of 5 plus 2. So n is, if you do the math, n is 7. So 31,250 is the seventh term, which is a7, okay? So just like we, when we did arithmetic, we found the nth partial sum. Remember the nth partial sum? And we found a formula, it's n over 2 a1 plus a n. Is there one for geometric? The, there's a couple actually, the nth partial sum. The nth partial sum the nth partial sum of a geometric sequence is the sum of the first n terms Sn equals A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus n which equals A1 times 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R as long as R is not 1. So when you add them up it's a little bit more complicated. The first term times 1 is the common ratio to the n. If you're adding 100, then that's 100 over 1 minus the common ratio. We can prove this. It's in there. You can see it. But that's how we do it if r is not 1. 52, because you can't divide by 0. Okay, page 865. As Find the partial sum Sn of the geometric sequence. Okay, so we, we're given A2 is 0.12, N is 4, A5 is 0 0.0096. So we need A1, so we can get A1 right there. A5 is, we need R for anything else. A2 RQ, 0 0.00096 equals 0.12 r cubed divide by 0.12 r cubed equals point, uh, 0 0.08 0 0.08 so r is q root of 0 0.008 which is 0 0.2 if r is 0 0.2 if a2 is 0 0.12 and r is 0.2 then what is A1? Remember A1, A2, going this we times by R, going back we divide by R. So 2.12 divided by 0 0.2 is what? Is 0.6, that's A1. So we got A1, we got everything, A1, 1 minus Rn over 1 minus R, 0.6, 1 minus 0.2, to the 4, n is 4, we're given that, 1 minus 0.2, so the sum of the first four terms, and you can do that, you can check that, we already have a1, a2, you find a3, a4, add them up, that's going to be the answer. Now, so we just talked about the first n terms, finite terms, what if we had infinite geometric series, the sum of an infinite or infinite geometric series so remember in in there we did a1 
plus a2 up to an. What if this was a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus, you know, infinite. So a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus 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 equals. That's the sum from ai1 to infinity. It doesn't end. And that equals, so s infinity basically equals a1 over 1 minus r if r is between negative 1 and 1, not including either 1. Now, if r is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, which is not this, we say series diverges, meaning no sum. That, that goes to infinity or it doesn't go to a specific number, okay? So let's look at this case first. Where did this formula come from? If you look at Sn equals a1, 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. r is between negative 1 and 1. Pick any number, like 1 half or negative 1 half, 1 quarter. And if you raise it to the power n right there, where n is infinity, you can see this is 1 to in the infinity over 2 to the infinity. 1 over infinity is what? Any number divided is 0. So that's going to be 0. And then we have that formula, a1 over 1 minus r. Now, if r is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, and you do r to the n, that goes to infinity. And that's why the series diverges if r. OK, so we have three series for geometric series, geometric for geometric series sequence. We have three sums, Sn equals a1, 1 minus Rn over 1 minus R if we if it's finite, like you're adding the first n terms. We have S infinity equals a1 over 1 minus R if infinite, and R between the 1 and 1, and Sn and series divers, if the ratio is greater than 1 or less than 1, okay? It depends on what you're given, which one you do or you use. So example 1. Okay. Write point three 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 as a fraction. Well, let's see. 0.33, this is actually 0.3 plus 0.03, it's 0.003 plus 0.0003, and so on. This is an infinite geometric series, right? Infinite because it doesn't stop, this repeats indefinitely. The common ratio, if you do 0.03 divided by 0.3 is 0.1. So the common ratio is 0.1 is between negative 1 and 1. There are, it's infinite. The common ratio between negative 1 and 1. So the sum is going to be, this sum is going to equal a1 over 1 minus r. a1 is 0.3, 1 minus 0.1, which is 0.3 over 0.9, which is 1 third. And we all know that 1 third is 0.3 repeating. Now find the sum if possible. 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32. What does that equal to? Well, this is infinite, right? It doesn't stop at some geometric series with r. What is r? Uh, it's 2, isn't it? Okay, since it's infinite, so it's not that. It's one of these. If r is between negative 1 and 1, we have a sum. It's not if r is greater than 1 or less than So what do we say? Series diverges. That's all we say. Series diverges. There's no number to add up to. Okay? No sum. Let's look at 68, page 865. 68, page 865. It says, tell the infinite geometric series is conversion or diversion. If it's conversion, find the sum. When it adds up, it, it's said to be conversion. So plus 4 over 25 plus 8 over 125. So what is the common ratio? 4 over 25 divided by 2 over 5, which is 4 over 25 times 5 over 2, which would be 2 over 5. So since it's infinite, 
and in between negative 1 and 1 it converges series converges to the sum which is a1 over 1 minus r 2 over 5 over 1 minus 2 over 5 which would be 2 thirds number 74 page 8 65 74 page 865 find the sum negative 100 over 9 plus 10 over 3 minus 1 3 over 10 minus this infinite let's see if it's geometric what's the common ratio so it's 10 over 3 times negative 9 over 100 and that's 1 that's 3 so it's negative 3 over 10 so it is infinite geometric series r is negative 3 tenth which is between negative 1 and 1 so it converges to the sum which is a1 over 1 minus r negative 100 over 9 1 minus negative 3 over 10 negative 100 over 9 1 plus 3 over 10 10 plus 3 13 over 10 which is negative 1000 over 118 all right let's go back to 62 page 865 planning to do a lot of examples because this is totally new stuff for you i'm sure partial sums find the sum Fine. This time written using sigma notation, so it might be a little confusing. That's why I want to do it. Five to k minus one. So let's write it out. K is one. It's ten times five to the zero plus. When k is two, it's ten times five to the first. When k is three, ten times square. Ten times five cube. Ten times. 5 to the 5 and it stops it's finite it stops at 6 okay 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we make 10 to the 4 10 times 5 to the 4 okay so it's a finite so there's one formula for the finite which is right here a1 1 minus rn over 1 minus r the common ratio you're always timesing by 5 the common ratio is Five. So this equals a1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. a1 is 10. 10 times 5 to the 0 is 10. r is 5 to the 6, right? n is 6. There's 6 terms over 1 minus 5, which is 39,060 if you work it out. Number 80. Page 865. It says express the repeating decimal as a fraction, 2.1125, repeating with the 25. So basically, let's write this down, 2.11 plus 0 0.0025 plus 0 0.000025 plus 0 0.0000025 and so on. So leave this alone. This one is, that's why I moved it away because it's not gonna be long with that. So this is a geometric series, it's infinite. With the common ratio is 0 0.01, right? If you divide any two consecutive terms, you, uh, you get it 01. So infinite, so remember there's one or, or it either converges or diverges since R is between negative one and one, it converges. And the sum is going to equal a1 over 1 minus r. We're talking about this is a1 there. 0 0.0025 over 1 minus 0 0.01, which is, let's use the calculator, 0 0.0025 divided by 1.01. 1 minus 0 0.01 empties. Let's write it as a fraction. It's 1 over 396. So this is 1 over 396. So this one 
equals 2.11 plus 1 over 3 96 which is 211 over 100 if you want to write it as a fraction which would be 10,457 you can use the calculator for this okay and I want you to look at number 90 it's done just make sure you know how to do this it's on page 18 of the notes and then at the end I have review this is in, in the notes go over that the summary that's in addition to the handout that I showed you earlier in, in section 12.2 uh, okay so it's all summarized here so we don't have to do 12.4 so the next session we're going to do is 12.5 which is mathematical induction it's optional I'll just, I'll just say a few words about it and then we'll do the last section which is 12.6